I've had some solid ideas this year that really filled up a lot of my time. The most interesting of these is filling 3D printed forms with concrete to create cheap and surprisingly robust mini machine tools. One such tool was a lathe I released a few months back. While it had some promising features, ultimately I wasn't happy with the result and wanted to revisit the concept since the idea of a cheap open source lathe is something I've yet to see fully realised. This video is covering my latest attempt. Unlike my last try, this model has proved itself to be a reliable, sturdy platform that can perform a variety of turning actions while not breaking the bank or itself. A key feature of the design of these tools is that they don't need many tools to build, and the lathe is no exception. Aside from access to a 3D printer, the lathe needs a hacksaw, spanners, and screwdrivers, and something to vibrate the concrete with, but that's pretty much it. If you're making tooling, a bench grinder is also essential. The build is broken up into three main parts. The base, the headstock, and the concrete pour. Starting with the base, after removing all supports, the two halves are laid next to each other and the seam connector is laid in place. Two lengths of threaded rod are then used to initially hold the two sides together. Following this, a whole bunch of non-printed hardware needs to be added to the base, including five coupling nuts, probably too many M4 bolts, and just as many T-nuts. Onto the top right T-nuts, some 2020 extrusion is installed for the motor mount, and below this, the coupling nuts and threaded rod for the headstock. The top cover needs a few threaded inserts to be heat set in place. These pieces can then be slotted into place and bolted down. Not too shabby. Building up the rear now, before clipping the pieces in place, we need to install some threading options, including three anchored coupling nuts and ten of these hexagonal printed pieces which have a captured nut and are a cheap and effective way to put threads in concrete. The body is now all together and ready for some super glue, which gets run along every seam. Part 2 is the headstock, which is a similar process. The big thing of note here is that I'm finally using proper tapered roller bearings, which I will tell you right now, make a world of difference. The headstock is intentionally a separate piece because it's the most likely point of failure and I wanted to be able to replace it without having to scrap the whole lathe. The slightly tricky bit here is keeping the inner tubes aligned while the headstock is lowered onto the body. Not bad. I install the spindle and bearings to ensure that they are aligned while the concrete sets. And with that, the form is now ready for concrete. This was actually a really nice form to fill. Nice big areas to pour into made this process go super smooth, and my god, can you see how much I've learnt since last time. Yeah, I haven't found, like, a neat way to do this. 
I always slightly overfill my moulds, since it's the easiest way to get consistent flat surfaces. After a few hours, I scrape the bulk of the concrete off, and then the next day, I do a final scrape to get a nice even surface. It's not super pretty, but it's very reliable. I also scraped down the surfaces that needed to be supported for a nicer finish, before letting everything set for a few more days. I lost some footage. Nothing important though, just installing the speed control on the right side of the lathe, and the electronics for it on the back, along with a mount for a light slash magnifying glass. The motor has also been mounted and the bearings greased. The lathe is almost ready to use, but needs some tooling to be in any way useful. The simplest tooling we will start with are called gravers, which have been used for hundreds of years to perform different lathe tasks. I found this great PDF from Sherline that covers the process in detail, but I found it pretty straightforward. Starting with some 3mm tool blank, I print a guide to hold it at a 60 degree angle. Pressing it against the bench grinder, I ensure it does not reach a red heat while grinding the face down into a diamond shape. To use these gravers, we will need a tool rest. I have designed an adjustable one for the lathe, but it needs some features turned, which we will do now. Temporarily, a simple fixed tool rest can be used. The first part I would make on this lathe would be turning down a length of rod to accommodate a drill chuck. Here however, I already completed this task on my previous lathe. Back to the tool rest, the stock, 6mm steel bar, is faced off. A centre hole is drilled, followed by a 1.5mm hole for a M2 tap. Some 6mm square bar is also prepared and cut to length. We take this to the drill press to create another 1.5mm hole, which is bored partially to 4mm with a hand drill because I lost my M4 collet. The tool rest can then be inserted into this small piece of 2020 extrusion that allows it to be repositioned as needed. I'll cover the build for this and the rest of the tooling I've made in another video once it's more properly finalised. Now with the proper tool rest, let's finish up with a torture test. A poorly roughed out 70mm aluminum circle. This begins with some 8mm bar stock that is turned down to accommodate an M8 die. Using a printed die holder, a thread is added to the end of the stock. Off camera, I really poorly cut out this aluminum blank, drilled and tapped its center. This gets threaded onto the brass we just cut and tightened flush with the collet chuck. I think this is about as extreme as you could go on this lathe. I set up an alternate tool rest for wide objects and get to cutting. This was a slow and unpleasant process, but again, it's a torch test. I'm also a novice when it comes to grinding. Larger tools, better hardened and sharpened tools, and blank stock that's even somewhat circular would all have made this process much easier. Despite all this, the lathe made it to the end no problem, aside from melting the printed motor pulley which never should have been printed in the first place. This part will become either a glue chuck or a faceplate, I haven't quite decided yet. 
think now some of my vision is starting to take form, and I hope that at this point I've shown that there is merit in these easy to build machine tools. I'm happy with this lathe as a base for future expansion. It's proven itself to be robust enough to actually be worth experimenting with, which was the problem I had with my last design. In terms of cost, this can be built from between 100 to 150 Australian, or 66 to 100 US, which I think is a good price considering what it can do. Overall, I'm thrilled with this result. It's gone above and beyond my previous attempts, and has proven itself as an idea worth looking into further. Keen to hear your thoughts on this one. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.